real estate agent just calling to see if you might be thinking about selling your house anytime soon oh sure I'll get your name off the list happy new year mm -hmm. bye-bye hi my name is Mona I am a local real estate agent just calling to see if you might be thinking about selling your house on Browse Avenue anytime soon. Wait, did you see it? Okay, here. No, that's my key. So Joey got a new car too. This is Joey's. Uh, the other one, Bidding War, seven offers. And then, we, yeah, we bid it up to 200,000 cash. Mm -hmm. That's insane. I was scared! I'm always freaking scared. I love the whole thing. You should take a vlog when you take a poop. <laughs> uh, I have a very special Welcome back. In today's video, I kind of just want to do a small q and A. I I got this really good question. Said that she wants to start focusing on listings. That it's less work and it's more beneficial for you in the long run. And she said she's on Zillow and she wants to really tackle some for sale by owners. And she wanted to know if she end up getting the opportunity to list with anyone, how does she handle commission? And then she also asked me, did you ever cut your commission in half just to get a listing? So this is how I handle for sale by owner. There's not a large chunk of for sale by owners, at least here in Philadelphia. I always call first the new for sale by owner. They are fresh. They're on Zillow for less than a week. I give them a call, introduce who I am, send them a business card. I follow up with them the next week. So I basically touch up with them every week. Um, just to keep showing up in their face and the way I look at for sale by owner is I think they always end up going to list with whoever they like the most from my experience so never really talk about your commission on the phone rule number one and rule number two is make sure they like you first so in order for them to like you, you need to stand on the seller's perspective and ask them about their plans. Like if it's an investment property, ask them where are they going to move the equity? Are they going to do a 1031 exchange? Are they going to pay off some debt and they can retire? You know, figure out what they really want and then figure out if the math makes sense. Because a lot of for sale by owner out there, they don't really have to sell. And the reason that they put it up there is to see if they can get that dream number. If let's say they want it for 250, but their house is only worth 200,000, I wouldn't even waste my time on the phone with them, let alone setting up a listing appointment to go see the house. Um, that's kind of how I take it. And the second question she said, for example, if I get 3% on a regular deal, would I have to negotiate with a for sale by owner to give 6% deal on the commission? So she kept three, the other agent keep three. Um, my take on that again is, don't talk about commission on the phone. Even if they ask you, tell them it's 100% negotiable. Try to get the FaceTime with them. And then do your own homework. Make sure it's a legit appointment. Figure out where they're moving to, where they're moving their equity, and see if they are a legit seller first. But once they are, 
Go meet them, see if they're ready. If not, keep following up with them. Make sure they like you first. Then you tell them how much you charge. For me, I typically charge 5%. It doesn't matter if you're for sale by owner or you're a regular seller. That's just how I do business and I keep 2.5. I give the other agent 2.5. Um, so <clears throat> the second question she also asked is about investment property and she said, what do I need to know about investment property? Is there a difference in the process? What question may an investor ask me? I want to be knowledgeable and prepared because I'm starting to get investor client. And what I think is if you are new, I mean deal with everyone, but preferably I don't like first time investor. They're even worse than first time home buyer. Just because their lack of knowledge and they're very like hard to make a decision because they don't know they don't have to spend that money, let's put it that way. So in order for you to help a first investor, I would say try to think of you as the investor. If you are looking to purchase a rental property, the first thing that you wanted to know is definitely how much rental income I can get. And then do some research on in the past 10 years, how much has the property been appreciated? What's the appreciation that's in this local, in this market? Would it be appreciated the next 10 years? Would you get any appreciation? And then thirdly, go to uh, your local um, city hall to find out if it's a multi-unit, are they legally zoned as a rental unit for three, a, a triplex? Because if they don't have a legit rental unit, what's gonna happen is when you did help your uh, client purchase the property, they're gonna run into issues of getting a rental license because it's not legally zoned as a triplex. Then they will get fined and they are gonna have trouble kicking tenants out. So it's a, it's a bunch of issues. So make sure you you know find out that the paperwork and everything is, is legal on that particular property. Um, so yeah, I hope I answered this question for you and if you guys have any other questions, make sure you send me a DM on Instagram or email me. I will be sure to get on that as quickly as possible for my weekly Q&A session. Um, I'm just gonna close out my vlog for the day. It's about 4 o'clock. I'm gonna get back on the dollar and I will stop around the 6 o'clock and then just go home and chill for the day. So thank you so much for watching. This is Luna over here. I will see you guys in the next video.